Mitchell Field Athletic Complex in Uniondale, Long Island. This weekend hosts the 2008 Catholic League Football Championship Games. This is the high school football game of the week presented by New Balance. And it is the 2008 Catholic High School Football League AAA Championship Game. The St. Anthony Friars versus the Gales of Iona Prep. Hello again, everyone. I'm Lou Grogno, along with Jimmy Cavallo at a frigid Mitchell Field here on Long Island today. The action figures to be red hot, though, despite the ice cold temperatures as the undefeated Gales take on the seven-time defending champion Friars of St. Anthony's. And Jim, you know, you talk about the Catholic League. This is what it's all about here today. Where else would you want to be, Louie, when the temperatures hit 25 degrees, the winds are swirling, swirling at 40 miles per hour? <laughs> and by the way... You look spectacular in your new New Balance MSG Plus Winter Parker. I mean, look at these things, folks. The great Gary Adler, New Balance. I feel like some sort of superhero to out of shape people, I tell you. But the one question is, Lou, will these winds that are swirling around here at Mitchell Field be the winds of change for the AAA division? Because for seven straight years, it has been all St. Anthony's. But in comes Iona Prep with a victory this year against St. Anthony's. Can they get one more and stop the streak at seven? Well, St. Anthony's this year has been hit hard by injury. And today, junior quarterback Brendan Schroeder steps into the spotlight at the QB position, trying to lead the Friars to the title. Well, they are one of those schools, St. Anthony's. When somebody goes down, they always seem to have that guy in the bullpen. And that guy now is Brendan Schroeder, the junior QB. One thing you got to know about him, folks, he's a flat-out competitor. This kid will not back down. This is a week ago in the semifinals against Chaminade. And when the Chaminade defense crept up, look where Schroeder's going. He's going up over the top. It is his time now, Mr. Brendan Schroeder. Well, Schroeder, Mr. Versatility, 155 yards through the air, 131 yards receiving this year as well for the Friars. On the other side, for the Gales, one of the most exciting players in the tri-state area is at their quarterback position, Tyre Woodson Samuels. He is Mr. Explosive. Tyre Woodson Samuels was on the JV last year. This year he's on the varsity, and he is a flat star pure acceleration when you talk about this young man just look at these highlights this is October 25th against St. Anthony's he put on a flat out show against the seven seven time defending champ Friars Tyre Woodson Samuels he could do it all from the position in his first year at the starter look at the location of this football he is the guy leading the charge for their first undefeated season in a long time now look at the numbers for Woodson Samuels here in 2008 over 2,100 yards through the air, 19 touchdowns, just three interceptions. He's also run the football in for touchdowns six times this season. So the scene is set. Iona Prep taking on St. Anthony's for the 2008 championship. And St. Anthony's head coach Rich Reichert has quite a challenge with his Friars today. We have plenty of talent. It's all about focus and finish. And if Coach Riker's going to get it done, he's got to take on one of the top tandems in the Tri-State. Tyree Woodson Sandals and the Mac Attack, Jeffrey Mack. It's Iona Prep against St. Anthony's. Where else? Right here on MSG+. This game is presented by New Balance. This is the New Balance. And brought to you in part by SportsGist.com. Connecting athletes with experts. The Marines, the few, the proud. The Marines and by Fresh Concepts, Integrated Team Solutions. We are in Mitchell Field here in Uniondale as St. Anthony's gets ready to take on Iona Prep and the third member of our broadcast team is Eamon McEnany. Let's check in with Eamon. Well, Lou, I spent some time with both coaches this week and after a while I thought I was talking to Goose and Maverick from Top Gun because both reinforced the need for speed. Iona Prep has several fast skill players on offense and the Gales playing up-tempo, no-huddle offense that gave St. Anthony's fits when these two schools met back in October. So Coach Rich Reichert made some adjustments this week. He is widening out his defense and he will get faster players on the field to try to slow down Tyree Woodson Samuels and the explosive Iona Prep attack. They might even spy Iona Prep's quarterback. Now when you play football at St. Anthony's, you expect to play for and win a championship. And Coach Rich Reichert reminded his Friars of that one last time before they took the field. 
Ow. All right, we are wounded animals, so everybody thinks. Everybody's written you guys off, except the people in this room. And that's the only people that matter. A wounded animal will fight and fight and fight till he's got no breath left. And that's what you got to do today. Every play, relentless, relentless, physical and fast. Relentless. This is going to be our finest moment. We've won 10, but never like this. This is the one that's going to count right here. Number 11, we told you guys, the championship goes through black and gold and nothing has changed. Nothing. And there he is, Coach Rich Riker. Can you be pumped up when you get a speech like that in his 23rd season? A graduate of where else? St. Anthony's High School in 1970. You see his record of stellar 180 wins. He mentioned 10 titles, but folks, the most important thing, he's won the last seven straight. A spectacular stranglehold the Friars have on the Catholic Championship. Seven consecutive titles. I don't care what sport. I don't care what league. I don't care. You win seven titles in a row, baby. It is really saying something. But the story today is the undefeated Gales of Iona Prep and their young gun head coach Vic Carollo in his sixth year comes in at 43 and 20. A graduate of Stepanak High School in 1984. Coach Carollo brings his club in today a perfect 10 and 0. And make note, one of those victories, October 25th, a victory against St. Anthony's and the Friars, but Coach Carollo knows this day is always different than the regular season game, though he knows his club is gonna see a different Friars of St. Anthony's. Well, back in that game on October 25th, Iona Prep won big, 41-21, and the Gales have put together a terrific year, 10-0. And, and they will receive the opening kickoff of this championship game. St. Anthony's gets ready to kick off, and they will kick left to right on your screen. The Friars in their white jerseys and black pants, black helmets, and Iona in their gold helmets, and the maroon last three season i own a prep last three seasons have ended at the hands of the friars of saint anthony's coach carollo said to himself a year ago driving home on the bus something has to change they went away from power football they now have a speed game in place they are wide open spread offense and it brings them to today undefeated with a chance to win their first ever triple a crown in the Catholic High School Football game, Catholic High School Football League, but four quarters of football are straight ahead. It will not be easy to take out the Friars. Nick Ferrara kicks it off. It's a deep kick and sails out of the end zone. And Iona Prep will take the football at the 20-yard line. Here's a look at Tyre Woodson Samuels, the junior 5'10, 155 pounds. What a Great season he has put together. 2,194 yards through the air, 19 touchdown passes. Only three interceptions too, Lou. He has burst upon the scene in a huge way. Tyrant Woodson Samuels. Iona Prep is heading into a stiff win here in Uniondale. And here is Woodson Samuels. Looks to get around the corner. He does. Across the 25 and takes it out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Here's a look at the Gales, offensive unit. And it's been a prolific offense all season long. The offensive line, led by Apostle Polis, Biagioni, Reed, Periscandola, and Matola. Here's a look at your backs and receivers. Jeff Mack, the outstanding running back. Alfano, the terrific wide receiver, along with Darlos James. On a second down play, here's the handoff off tackle. That should be enough for an Iona Prep. First down, the St. Anthony's defense. The Friars, terrific year in and year out on that defensive side of the ball. And they're going to need that defense to step up today against this potent Iona Prep offense. It won't burn your tree. It'll burn that It is a first and 10 for the Gales at the 31-yard line. And Samuels out of the shotgun. He flips it outside to Mack. Jeff Mack gets around the corner at the 30. And then ridden out of bounds across the 35. 
All right, now let's take a look at that St. Anthony's defense. And the Flyers start up front with Welsh, McLean, Basil, and Pesha. Pesha, an outstanding player at the defensive end slot. Alessandri, Harris Buckner, and Burke, the linebackers. And the defensive backs, Cheney, Vitalios, Zawatsky, and Kima. Here we go on a second down play. Here's the throw. Woodson Samuels hits out foul on that side. And what a year he has had. 55 receptions coming in. Almost 1,000 yards through the air. Yeah, the senior Alfano, 5'7", 150 pounds, way too much space. You're going to give this young man, he has torched defenses this year, nearly 1,000 yards. Lewis and eight touchdowns to go along with 55 receptions in 10 games. You average five catches a game in high school football, baby. It says something. First and 10, I own a prep at the 45. And now a whistle and timeout taken by the Gale. So they burn an early timeout with 10.52 remaining here in this first quarter. Well, Louis, two teams come into this game today by virtue of outstanding victories in the semifinals. We'll first start with Vic Carollo's Gales of Iona Prep. They were taking on a real big Zavarian club. Nobody's bigger than Zavarian, but early on it was Tyree Woodson Samuels. 37 yards on this touchdown run. He had three touchdown runs on the day, but Zavarian kept coming. This one to Gerald Mastretta. Mastretta turns and burns for the end zone, and it was 7-6. But on this day, it was all about the Gales getting to the final. It's the Mac attack. Jeffrey Mack, 53 yards, and Iona Prep was in complete control. And for the capper, Woodson Samuels to Jordan Bronner for the TD. 42-20 Prep, the Gales were going to the finals. The Gales line up here on a first down play after calling that early timeout. They've got trip receivers to the right side and twins to the left, and Woodson Samuels takes it up the middle. Out of the shotgun, he takes it right up to the midfield strike. He is so dangerous, Jim. You don't know if he's going to pull back and throw the football, if he's going to run. Really keeps the defense on its heels. Uh, he has the respect of Rich Reichert and St. Anthony's. Rich Reichert spoke so highly this week of Tyree Woodson Samuels and what he's been able to do in running this offense. Here's a big gainer for Jeff Mack. He's ahead of the field. At the 20 to the 15, he is in. Touchdown, Iona Prep. <laughs> 50-yard touchdown run for Jeff Mack. And the Gales strike first. The young man who grew up off Fordham Road in the Bronx, New York, his father told him, Jeff, you can't only run around people, you got to run through them sometimes. Breaks a tackle at the point of attack, and then the closing speed, the Mac attack, is on patrol here in the Catholic Finals. Shane Carthy in to kick the extra point. It is good. 10-15 remaining in the first, and Iona Prep strikes. They lead it seven to nothing. The story for Iona Prep this year has been these guys bursting upon the scene. Once Jeffrey Mack runs through the arm tackles, tackles, he is gone. Goodbye, Lou. Great acceleration for Jeffrey Mack. And alongside of Tyre Woodson Samuels, they have written quite a story for Iona Prep football. Mack is so explosive, and what a tandem they have become, Lou, because, you know, when you talk about Mack and Woodson Samuels, they play off each other so well. If you can't stop number seven, number four, we'll take you downtown to the house. Tyree Woodson Samuels and Jeffrey Mack have taken the Gales of Iona to a perfect 10-0 season, and they have torched defenses all season long as the Gales have put together a spectacular run to the finals today. Six plays, 80 yards, took just a minute, 45. Mack with that 50-yard touchdown run. That is his 20th rushing touchdown of the year. I mean, just a big-time player, and don't get caught up in his size. I mean, Mack, 5'6", 155 pounds. Over 100 points on the season for Jeffrey Mack. 
Gene Parkey to kick off here for Iota Prep. Kicks into the wind, a short kick that gets away, bounces around inside the 15-yard line, picked up there, the ball loose on the sideline. Let's see, they're going to say that the ball carrier was down. That was Corley Woods, Jafria Corley Woods, who carried it back for St. Anthony's. All right, Brendan Schroeder brings the Friars offense out. See Schroeder with 155 yards through the air. Took yeah, over as a starting quarterback on November 19th. Yeah, that's November 19th, uh, as in just a that's week ago. Goal, right. <laughs> as Tommy Schreiber, one of the best athletes in the Tri-State, goes down with a broken foot. And Schroeder has stepped right in. But remember one thing about Schroeder. He's been on the field as a wide receiver. He's a gamer and an athlete. It's not like he's been standing on the sidelines all year long. He's ready for this moment. Now let's take a look at the Friars starting offensive unit on the offensive line. Naja, Oriema, Bartolomeo, Pedroli, and Mills. The backs and receivers. Flynn, Mercurio, the outstanding running back. Carberry. And you see Timothy Wine also lining up at wide receiver. 6'3", 185, a junior. He's got... 12 receptions on the year to lead the Friars. There is Schroeder looking to throw. He's going long into the wind. And he has one across the 45 and down towards the 40-yard line. This is what they love about Schroeder, Lou. He is not afraid of this moment. He is going to go right after it. Actually, Joe and Grail on the on the catch. Yeah, it is Joe and Grail, and you see what a tremendous win Schroeder lets this one fly. But this is the attack style you're going to see out of St. Anthony's. They're not going to come in here and just show up as the seven-time defending champs. They didn't feel bad for themselves for about one day, and after that, after their quarterback won down, they knew they had to turn the page. Curio carries it, hit at the line of scrimmage, and dribble back. No. Gain on the play. So the Iona prep defense comes up big on that play. Here's a look at the Gales defensive unit. Up front, De Simone. Here's Yoni and Gadsden. Three-man line. The four linebackers, Longo, Weston, O'Hagan, and Morris Hilton. The corners, Darlis James and Joe Ricci, Pete DeSalvo, and Mike Dunkley are the safeties. Louis, that was a great grab, too, by Joey and Grayo. Joey, excellent possession receiver. It's not an easy day to catch a football that's up in the jet stream. Here's the pitch outside, and good penetration by Iona Prep. No chance there for St. Anthony's on the play. Yeah, it looked like the first man there was Sidney Weston, the outside linebacker. Look at Sidney. Got that hand all bundled up with the broken hand. Fast and physical, emotional leader. It was Sidney Weston against in their first victory against St. Anthony's on October 8th. He Sidney finishes it off, but it was Darlos James right there who got the first contact. So number five in that October 25th victory against St. Anthony's, that set the tone for the defense. Weston only a sophomore. There's a whistle on the play. Looks like a legal procedure called here against St. Anthony's. Let's see the call. From the 40-yard line. Here's Schroeder trying to set up a screen. He does it all. A big defensive play. Football is loose as Weston made the hit. Ball came loose. And recovered by Iona Prep. Darlos James in on the play as well. It was a lateral, Lou. That's why the ball was live. And Darlos James, watch it once again. You be the judge at home. No, it was a forward pass. So they're going to say he had possession, and he did. Mercurio got the feet down, and a huge hit right there by Darlos James. So it was a forward pass. Now watch it once again. This is pursuit right here by number five, the four-year starter, Darlos James. Now you talked to Vic Carollo this week about Darlos James. He says, listen, 
you might have to go back 50 years in the books to find a four-year starter for Iona Prep. That's just what Darlos James is, and he has been shot out of a cannon to start this championship game. He is ready to play some defense. A huge hit right there to force a fumble. Gregory Gadsden on the fumble recovery for the Gales, and they are in business from the St. Anthony 46. Here's Mack dancing and weaving his way. Picking up positive yardage. For the second time, he says it's very basic, man. we got to stop their run. It sets up everything out of that triple option. And then, of course, we got to run it on them in turn because that is what we do here at Iona, explosive with the football, and win that turnover battle. Right off outside, Mack turns the corner inside the 30-yard line. It's all about tempo, tempo, tempo for Iona Prep, Lou, and you can see it early on in this game. They want to play at a different speed game now, and that's what Vic Colombo decided to go in that direction after losing those three straight years, the last three years, to St. Anthony's in the playoffs. With St. Samuels in trouble, trying to scamper out of there, now dives ahead to about the 28-yard line. For six yards, so it puts him down a second, and he called about nine. And Coach Rich Reichard knows that Iona Prep has the tempo going right now. There's Mack, and he's hit and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's Ryan Fume right there, number 43, the young man who will head off to UMass to play lacrosse. Just an athlete. Fume has been so impressive in his career, just a free spirit, an energizer for these Friars of St. Anthony's. Of course, his brother Chris, a champion at St. Anthony's, made it a big play in the 2005 title game. Against who? Iona Prep. Third down, and here's a throw outside. It is caught by Jordan Bronner, and he takes it inside the 20, and looks like he may have enough for the first down. Good effort after the catch. Bronner's a good-looking receiver, Lewis. Five pounds, and he's hot, too. Bronner in the semifinals against Severian, six catches and over 100 yards, so he got to the postseason and said, get the ball to me, baby, throw it. It is a first down for the Gales. Here's Mack. That's oh. a great move, and he heads to the end zone. Touchdown, Iona Prep. <laughs> there are certain things you can't teach, and you saw one right there out of Jeffrey Mack. An ankle-breaking, thunderous trip to the inside. Watch it once again. The edge is closed up. Whack right there. We just saw Fume make a huge play. Well, Jeffrey Mack put one on him right there for his second touchdown. Unbelievable. Here's the extra point kick. It is good. 5.21 remaining in the first quarter. Iona prep off to a sparkling start as the Gales lead it 14 to nothing here on the high school football game of the week. First time in 11 years, and you see the numbers on that day, nearly 400 yards rushing. Look at the defense, though. Four sacks and two fumbles. They outscore them 20 to 8 in the second half. Looks at Samuels, 267. When you're taking on this team this year. Yes, we've won the title seven years in a row, but they are, they have had the higher level of play in 2008. And it is showing itself so far because they have set the tone on both sides of this ball. I mean, you see the scoring drive, six plays, 47 yards, never a lot of time with the explosive nature of the Gales this year. Two minutes and nine seconds, the Mac attack, Jeffrey Mack with the touchdown. Well, let's see if St. Anthony's can come up with an answer here. The Friars trail by two scores. A little bit more than halfway through this first quarter. Schroeder running the option, keeps it himself, and goes down. Iona Prep screams it out and reads it beautifully. Yeah, tracking him down on the backside there. Number 54, Michael Longo, the super sophomore, Richie Record. Cannot like the way things are going. His keys to victory in this game, be physical against the run. He's talking about Jeffrey Mack and the quarterback, Woodson Samuel. Stop their big plays. Hasn't happened so far. We've seen some real big ones. And, of course, when you got arguably the best kicker in the tri-state, Nick Ferrara, you got to use him as a weapon, as they did in their semifinal victory over Chaminade. 
Well, when you're playing catch-up, your kicker becomes a non-factor, Lewis. Well, here's Schroeder running that option again, and a very short pickup. In case you're just joining us, it is frigidly cold here. Telecast, our, our camera, camera people are doing an outstanding job trying to hang in there with that wind. Oh, great job by the MSG Plus crew. They've been out here for about seven or eight hours already doing a great job. The weather will be a factor in this game, but so far, it's sunny skies for Iona Prep. Oh, Schroeder, it's a nice move here and has a big gainer across the 40, the 30-yard line, makes a cut, fumble, and it looks like St. Anthony's has recovered at the 27-yard line, but Schroeder did a great job selling that play on the option. That great job of trailing the play by Patty Fiavanti right there. The young man who's going to head off to Harvard. Support your quarterback looking for a block. But this is what you get out of Schroeder. You know he's an athlete. You know he can make plays off this triple option. Great little option fake. And then he turns it upfield for some big yardage right here. And then you see the ball tipped out of his hands by Fiavanti right there to jump on it. Omnipresence, Pat Fiavanti. Pete DeSalvo stripped that ball out of there, but the Friars do recover, and they have a big gainer. First down and 10, and the handoff goes up the middle. Pick up. In here, St. Anthony's would feel a whole heck of a lot better about themselves, and they could really just kind of settle this game down. Schroeder pitches. Curio looking to turn the corner, and nowhere to go again. Great job. They're holding. Number eight on the offense. Ten yards for the spot with the foul. We'll replay second down. So Biagioni tells them to walk it off. It's the pursuit. Watch all the gold helmets kind of running to the edge. And just cutting off the path right there. It's everybody on the inside. Pete DeSalvo and company. And of course Michael Dunkley. Outstanding, outstanding. Defensive back. 5'8", 180 pound, also a B-plus student in the classroom. St. Anthony is looking for a halfback option play, and that one gets hung up in the wind as Flynn 35 and driven out at the 22. And it's an important play, Lou, and it's going to give Rich Racker a decision because, believe it or not, St. Anthony is one of these high schools as you watch it once again. Excellent job on the option. Mercurio with a good kick-out block, and Nicky Flynn turns it up. And they're in field goal range for their Maryland bound kicker, and they're going to strut him out now. But you see Flynn. He gets the necessary yardage for them to get in field goal range for Nick Ferrara. And Ferrara, the win will be a driving win in the semifinals against Chaminade. And now Ferrara lines up. This will be a 39-yard field goal and a tough win. Good snap, kick on the way, and it is good. He drills it through the upright. Ferrara will be a turp, and look at this. This is in tough conditions, and he hammers it through from 39 yards. And it's just something to keep in mind, because if this game comes down to a big kick, as St. Anthony's trails Iona Prep by 11 after one quarter of play. And Friar senior running back Kevin O'Malley has been playing with a heavy heart all season. His mother, Denise, passed away in July after a long battle with cancer. And every game day, Kevin visits his mom's grave in Northport. He pulls out a chair, sits down, and talks to her and asks, asks, him, asks her for strength and asks her to watch over him. And he has dedicated his senior season to her honor and her memory. And it's been a great escape for him to get on the field and play football, his father to watch him play. Last week was the highlight of the season as he scored two touchdowns and rushed for over 100 yards. But Coach Rich Riker was telling me this week, it, football has been great for him to get out here and be a part of a team and another family and just have that outlet and that escape. Luke? All right, Amen. Now he watching from the sidelines, and here is another big play for Iona Prep. Mack down the sideline. He's in. Touchdown. Iona Prep. Number four, Jeffrey Mack. The Mack show continues low. He's as a flag comes down, that run 43 yards, but it looks like it's coming back. Talios, the corner, senior corner coming over to get an explanation. Let's see if we can see that block.
I don't know. I don't know if that's a block in the back right there. You would hope that was not the block they were talking about, Vic Carollo. So you can see the play will take away the touchdown. Coach Vic wants a little explanation. Very even temperament on Vic Carollo, also the head basketball coach at Iona Prep. This guy has been holding basketball practice at 6.30 in the morning, a couple days a week, and then football at 3 o'clock. Talk about a full day. I mean, come on, he's doing a great job, Coach Carollo. Well, his football team has a first down here. From the 24-yard line of St. Anthony. Ball tipped at the line of scrimmage, and it falls incomplete. Let's check in with Eamon. Well, Lou, you talk about a busy Coach Vic's day started with basketball practice at 11 before he got on the bus over here to Long Island. Five guys on this football squad will be at basketball practice Monday afternoon, win, lose, or tie. So Coach Vic juggling two balls literally at Iona Prep today. I'll tell you one thing about <laughs> Coach Carolla, man. He's going to be doing some Christmas shopping this year because his wife Cindy and that beautiful six-year-old daughter, his Alexa, they haven't seen much of the coach <laughs> in the past couple months. Here's the pass that comes out to Jordan Brana. And another one up prep. It takes it all the way down near the 10-yard line. Well, it's what makes them different and what makes them great. And they're not one-dimensional. We speak so much about Jeffrey Mack running the ball and Tyra Rootson running the ball. But look at Woodson Samuels. He can throw the quick out, too. And a great job right there by Jordan Brana. He looks like a receiver coming back for the ball. This is no good, man. And off goes up the middle, taken down near the 5-yard line. Mack on the carry, one of the few times they've been able to stop Jeff Mack, and he still picked up about five yards. Yeah, Mack is approaching 150 yards here. Yeah, we're just, just starting the second quarter of a play. 137 yards, 138 yards, and two touchdowns. Trip receivers go to the left. The give to Mack. Gets a block on the corner, turns the corner, touchdown, Iona Prep. Lou, well, this guy's got the quickest stop and start we've seen the whole year, and he is giving fits to the St. Anthony defense. You kind of know it's coming when you're the defender. He's going to slow down and then re-accelerate. And you know what? There is nothing you can do because he just explodes away from you. Jeffrey Mack has been off the charts in this first half of this Catholic championship. Carthy kicks the extra point despite the high snap. And with 10.35 remaining in the second, the Gales lead 21 to 3. Here it is. Watch him put the whack right there and just explodes again and finds the pylon into the end zone. Has a tough time getting the handle and look at that right there. Just explodes to the corner. Jeffrey Mack, the Mack attack, just keeps on. Thousand five at Hofstra. Chris and Uzel and St. Anthony's looking to win five straight titles. And early on, and Uzel was running the triple option into the end zone. But back come the Gales. Sean Mara, the legendary name, making a huge throw to Mark Castellano. The game was tied at seven. But in the end, it was a coming out party for Chris and Uzel. His second TD. Five straight titles for Coach Rich Reichert. 2005 is your champions from St. Anthony's 27-7. He's won the last two to make it seven consecutive, 10 overall, eighth consecutive final they're playing in, and they've played in 15 finals in the last 16 years. That is dominance. I would say so. That's a pretty impressive run there for the Friars. Here's a third down play. Big play for St. Anthony's, and they hand it off up the middle as the Friars. And he had to get to the 25-yard line, we'll get a shot of the ball. It is a first down. So Carberry. Such an important drive here for the Friars, trailing 21 to three. Well, if you could punch it in here, Jim, and you're very much in the game, heading towards halftime. Well, Coach Rackett certainly knows that. Friar Nation hoping for a little life right here as the former ball boy, Brendan Schroeder, brings him up. 
Here's Schroeder looking to throw. Now he gets outside and breaks one tackle. Dimes ahead inside the 25, down to about the 22. Yeah, Brendan Schroeder, he was a ball boy for St. Anthony's when both of his brothers played here. His brother Nick, a 2003 graduate who won two titles, and his brother Zach from the 2005 team. He won a couple titles in 03 and 04. They both called Brendan this week. And after he made the first start in the semis, they were on the phone with him. His mom told me after the semifinal win, his first start at quarterback, I can breathe now, baby. <laughs> she was so relieved. Great people, the Schroeders. Great people. Enjoy talking to him. Chris Schroeder running the option. Keeps it himself. And goes down hard as he's sandwiched by a couple of defenders. Sidney Weston in on the play for Iona Prep. Yeah, this has been a tough spot. I mean, let's face it, you're in the playoffs of a team that's won seven straight titles and your number one quarterback, a dynamic presence goes down and all of a sudden they turn to you, uh, Schroeder. And, you know, he wasn't so much the backup quarterback as he was one of their wide receivers, though. So it's not like he's just, you know, taking all the reps as the backup quarterback. He was doing his thing as a wide receiver. Uh, Coach Riker just said he's done just a great job and run this offense as a great athlete and a competitor and he's got football smarts and they haven't missed a beat in running this triple option with Brendan Schroeder at the helm. He's rolling out left side, keeps it himself, breaks one tackle and puts his head down trying to get to that first down marker. He's going to be a couple of yards short. So it brings up a fourth down for the Friars. Well, you watch it once again, and you can see selling options, selling option, runs through an arm tackle there, and moves it up close enough now. And check it out from a little low angle, coming right at you. Dangerous looking hit here. Watch his knee. Oh, man, that's taking a shot to the knee right there. Glad to see Schroeder jump right back up. Hey, with a name like Schroeder, man, he's the champ, right? You know the reference I'm talking about, Lewis? Ricky Schroeder? Oh, yes. Don't die, champ. Don't die. Right there, though. Listen, we mentioned before, down 21 to three, it pretty much has taken the kicking game out. So you think St. Anthony's is in go forward mode as they try and win crown number eight. And of course, to get here, they had to get through a tough Chaminade team in the semifinals. And it was just a week ago at St. Anthony's. It was the Friars of St. Anthony's against the Flyers of Chaminade. Don't look now, but Ryan Higgins and Chaminade to Bobby Lucas, who was 7-6 Flyers. But then Schroeder up top to Pat Piervante. And then one of the great defensive presences all year long for St. Anthony's. Matty Metalios taking it to the house on the pick six. And then look at number three, Kevin O'Malley. Two touchdowns on the day. O'Malley leads his Friars into the finals looking for number eight. And a big play here for those Friars. A fourth down. Fourth and three. One for one so far on fourth down. And a whistle, penalty flag is thrown. This could be against St. Anthony. Let's see. No, Louis, maybe I, I think they drew. Well, Iona Prep might have jumped. Let's see. It'll be a huge penalty. And it is. That'll give St. Anthony's a first down. No, yeah. oh, you can't believe it. Schroeder maybe hit him with a Maybe hit him with a little cadence. Gives, take another look right here. There it is. Maybe hit him with a little. Hoo, hoo, hoo. I always, I always enjoy an opportunity to get my cadence in here. Very well done, by the way. <laughs> oh, fumble! It's picked up by Mercurio. <laughs> I mean, listen, when you're defending the option. Curio again, Lou. He took quite a shot there as he was bending down to pick up the ball. Well, he sort of hung out to dry there when the ball's on the turf. He's just a it's one of the guys when you talk to the coach, has nothing but great things to say. And he's got a lot of Division I AA interest because he's a gamer, Lou. And when the season started with a 
hurting his ankle in the preseason. You see that right ankle all bandaged up. But he will just keep coming, Nick Mercurio. Well, now St. Anthony's, they need to get on the scoreboard here by getting into the end zone in this final three minutes. Second and 14. Tackle play, Chris Carberry carries inside the 15. Peter moving down to two and a half left here in this first half. Carberry gets up, limping. Biagioni with another tackle on the inside. And this is this has just been the theme this year. Guys hopping off for the Friars. So hopefully Carberry, just a little mild twist or something. Now third and long. You know this traditionally a passing situation. And as Greg Gatson gets set to get off the ball. Flyers have to get inside the four to pick up a first down. Blitz. Schroeder looking to throw on the run. He delivers. Oh, big hit on the sideline. Some of the St. Anthony's fans thought it might have been a little late, but no flag. Well, you're looking at a sophomore right there, folks, who plays with a little edge. That's Michael Longo. 5'11", 225 pounds. The young man who squats nearly 500 pounds. And he can bring it. <laughs> oh, man. That's a football play right there. Also throw a baseball. Look at him. <laughs> Nearly 85 miles per hour as a freshman. As a freshman pitcher, he also loves to fish with his family. Lou, I think this guy, he'll, he'll, he'll pull that shark out of the water with his bare hands. <laughs> He's fired up after that play. Here's Amari. He's in. Touchdown, St. Anthony. Beautiful footwork by Kevin O'Malley at the point of attack. He danced through the hole, kept his balance, and got into the end zone. And O'Malley has given the Friars some life. Huge hole by the right side of that offensive line. Here it is. Watch it once again. A little cutback. Looking to put the hand down, Lou. Keeps his balance and finds his way into the end zone. Third touchdown in their last two games, and of course he's pumped up. St. Anthony calls a timeout with a minute 49 remaining as they lined up for that extra point. It is 21 to nine at the moment, and that is a gigantic touchdown by the Friars to cap off that drive. Well, it just keeps hope alive, Lou, and they just kept on coming. And he took some early contact in the backfield, did O'Malley, and never gave up on the play. And look at him point to the sky in memory of his mother. It's really important as they will go for two now. Down 12 points. Schroeder, running option, nowhere to go. Iona Prep pouring in, and it's Mike Longo again, that super sophomore. And look how pumped up he is as he heads towards the sideline. The guy is what Vic Carollo says, blue collar personified, man. Just as tough as they come. And you see the first contact right there on the pursuit was Sidney Weston. Sidney Weston has also played a huge first half for the Gales of Iona. And, you know, we've, I've mentioned it a couple times about the St. Anthony's kicking game. That's why they went for two right there. You know, you're down 12. You kick the extra point for one. You're down 11. Now, I know folks are going to say, hey, it's too early not to take the one point. You can make that argument. You can make that argument. What they're trying to do is cut it to a 10-point lead so their kicking game uh, comes back into play when you look at the differential. And three fourth down conversions on that last drive. But they still trail right at them. He does it again, keeps it on the ground. And the ball covered by Iona Prep at the 30-yard line. That's why you work there, Louie. You gotta keep me honest. Keep me honest, Louie. Well, here's a first down coming up here for the Gales. They have a 21-9 lead. Haven't seen Mr. Mack on the field in a while. You get that eight-minute drive. Jeffrey probably got a little chill over there on the sidelines. Nothing like to work that chill out. And they get those wheels turning. Number four, what a huge first half. Well, we got ourselves a ball game here. St. Anthony's only down by drives like that. They keep this offense off the field. Haven't seen these guys. Here's Mack. Puts his head down. And St. Anthony 
covers it well that time. You know, we chronicled so much about the story of Kevin O'Malley losing his mom, and Jeffrey Mack faced a similar circumstance his freshman year. His mom, Trina, uh, had an intestinal disorder that almost claimed her life, and Jeffrey said, you know, in those days when it was touch and go, and we didn't know what was going to happen, it changed me as a young man, and we got through that as a family, and it's just changed everything for me. Let's see, Samuels takes it out of bounds across the 40-yard line. He's been rock solid in this game, 4-5, 47, running for 21 yards, but so far he's had to get, get it to Mr. Mack. Try to set up a screen and thrown in the middle of a host of St. Anthony's oh, defenders. Man. And you see Eric Pesci picked that ball up, annoyed, because that was a mistake right there by Tyrell. Just kind of threw that ball up for grabs. And he's lucky that the guy in the black and white wasn't running the other way with that one. Yeah. Coach Carollo. Now the shotgun, Woodson Samuels. Gets away from the pressure momentarily, still on his feet, still has the football across the 50-yard line, and turns what looked to be a disastrous play into a positive one. There is no substitute for Supreme couple yards, but Basil, he'll keep coming. I, I guarantee that. Third down play, Woodson Samuels. Fires and it's intercepted. Coming back the other way for St. Anthony, a big play as it's picked off by John Burke, the senior linebacker. It is a big one by JB, steadiest guy on the defense in the words of head coach Rich Riker makes all the calls. He's smart, he gives you everything he has and he read that ball and jumped into the passing lane. Ty Ray never sees number 55, Johnny Burke. And Burke with a big pick here. Watch it once again, you see Burke step in front there. So a huge one here for St. Anthony's. 51 seconds left as Burke gives them an opportunity. Schroeder back to throw. Now gets away from three defenders. Pulls it down on the run. He lets it fly and that's nearly intercepted. Into traffic. Intended for Patrick Fear. Shot the tail end of the play. Here it is. Yeah, and you don't know it took a shot at the end of the play. He took a shot and throwing that ball into traffic. Hey, listen, you got to be aggressive and try and make it. You, know, you can't just hand the ball off. You know, they're trying to get into field goal range here. And they're probably all about 12 yards away from where they want to be. Maybe even a little more into this win. Schroeder, quarterback draw. Takes it up the middle, breaks one tackle, and dives inside the 30-yard line. A big pickup. That's a first down for the Friars. That's the athlete right there, too. Trying to get him up to the line of scrimmage because once they reset the chains, the clock and roll, you see 34 seconds and a first and 10. So now the chains are reset. Schroeder just spikes the ball, stops the clock with 33 seconds remaining here in this first half. <laughs> There's a warrior there, Brendan Schroeder, trying to flex that right leg. He's taking some shots here in this first half. Well, he did what they had to do. Get sideline, warm it up. Schroeder again, trying to get outside, and he will be pulled down. Gang tackle behind the line of scrimmage. They'll have to use a timeout. Schroeder, the ball carrier. Clock stopped with 25.7 seconds remaining. Uh, we'll bring up a bring up a third down now. You see Schroeder banged up. He's feeling it. You see those flags. That's it. That'll be into the face of Nick Ferrara if they line up for a field goal. So not going to be an easy kick. Play here for the Friars. It's just 25.7 seconds remaining. They're going to have to move quickly. Here's the pitch. Outside. Kirla trying to get to the sideline. Guys, watch once again. I own a prep. Run into the football. Look at all the gold hats there on the outside. They're right in this ball game, only trailing by five points. It is it's a big play here for the Friars. It's just 25.7 seconds remaining. They're going to have to move quickly. 
Here's the pitch. Outside. Kirwa trying to get to the from that point. Yeah, it's probably more like 60 with that win. Here's the pitch. Half back option. And now he's going to run it himself. Here's Quinn. Takes it at the 10. Trying to get outside. Oh, he's at the five. He dives in. Touchdown, St. Anthony. individual plays you will ever see by Slick Nick Flynn. He was determined to take the ball into the end zone, and that's just what he did. You just can't do it any better than this. It's an option pass, but the coverage isn't there. So Nicky tucks it under and says, I got to go, baby. And not only does he get the first down, but he says, I got to take it into the house and look at him extend the ball inside the pylon. You just can't do it any better than Nick Flynn does right here. He was the guy that made the play in the semifinals a week ago. And now it's Flynn once again. Look at him navigating his way through the defense, and he shows he's got some supreme quick himself. Whoa, Louie, don't go anywhere, baby. If you thought the Gales were going to walk through this one, you thought wrong. The Friars, with some good old-fashioned pride, have come all the way back. And now they are right in this ball game, only trailing by five points. It is 21 to 16 with 9.5 seconds remaining here in the first half. What a job by the Friars on that scoring drive. Six plays, 41 yards. Flynn caps it off with a spectacular 31-yard touchdown run. And after trailing 21 to 3, St. Anthony's right back in the game. Lou, it's 31 yards, but look, it's, it's got five dimensions to it. Dimension one, he's got to abort the option pass. Then he's got to cut it upfield. Then he's got to turn it to the outside. And the fifth and final, he's got to go airborne and get it into the end zone. And you got to be excited to make a play like that in a high school football game. That was awesome. There's Flynn, five rushes. But listen, St. Anthony's a little banged up. But how about four for four, Louie, on fourth downs in the game? Four for four. And what's this? Did they jump on that ball? No, they didn't. An Iona prep football. I think the ball went out of bounds. Yeah. Oh, man. St. <laughs> Anthony the thought they had it before it went out. So the Gales will have the ball. Five point lead. And here is Tyre Woodson Samuels as he comes out. And then Lou, you know what? It's clear cut what's happened in this game. St. Anthony's by getting their offense going in their running game, they've kept this offense off the field. And then as soon as Iona came back there in the later stage of that second quarter, the defense of St. Anthony's forces a turnover and they turn it into points on a huge play. And you can see the gamer, Rich Riker, knows he's right back in this championship game. Looks like a penalty flag has been thrown. By yeah. keeping them off the field, that kind of destroys that up-tempo. No, I mean, it's all about, you know, just the tempo and, and getting out there on the field. Woodson Samuels breaks one tackle. Oh, changes direction, reverses his field, runs into the official, still at his feet. Look at Woodson Samuels. What a play <laughs> as he takes it across the 50-yard line. And that'll end a wild first half of play in this Catholic League championship game. Maybe a little foreshadowing of what's going to come in the second half, but you're right, Lou. You know, when you go no huddle and you establish tempo, you got to be on that field. But give credit to the guys in black and white because down 21-3. And with their seven straight runs really on the brink, they battle back. But, of course, there are still two big quarters of football uh, to go in this game. And Iona Prep has a lot more possessions to go in this one. We'll kick it down to Eamon. All right, Jimmy, thanks a lot. Coach, in the locker room, you appeal to your players, the heart of a champion. They've been in this game before. How important was that experience down 21-3? Well, I, you know, I, we didn't give up, so I, you know, I'm really proud of them. 
Now in the second half, you guys are going to get the ball. How important is that opening possession going to be in the third? We're going to see. You know, we we got to keep the ball out of their hands. They get a lot of flood of speed on offense. And I got to ask you one more, Flynn, on that option pass, not option pass. That's just how you guys draw it up, right? Tuck it in and then run all the way. Yeah, it's great coaching, right? <laughs> all right, coach. Good luck in the second half, Lou. <laughs> all right, Amon. Oh, man. And it was Nick Flynn's spectacular run here, drawing the Friars closer, heading towards the half. Well, if they find a way to win their eighth straight, they will talk about the Flynn. And scamper for years to come in Friar Country. St. Anthony's 21 to 16 here in this Catholic League Championship game. And earlier today, you can see Cardinal Spellman defeating Cardinal Hayes 8-6 in the A Championship. The Double A Championship, all Holy Trinity. They win it big, 55 to 7. And of course, our score here is 21-16. Iona Prep, an exciting first half of football, Jimmy. And Louie talking about that double-A championship, Holy Trinity, and step win eight straight. And it pulls them to within five. A look at the first half stats. Sponsored by New Balance. You can see rushing yardage. Well, Iona prepped with 179 yards, but St. Anthony's came on late to put up 154. Total yards fairly even. And you can see the play St. Anthony's running off 35 plays to Iona Prep's 25. A key stat right there keeping the only five points separate the two teams. we got a big second half. Here's the top ten. Mike Quick's top ten. Don Bosco, they already won this weekend. St. Joe's Montville, number two. St. Peter's prep season comes to an end against Don Bosco. Wayne Hills rolls on. They score in the fourth quarter after trailing PB. Can you believe it? Iona Prep, they're looking to move on up with a victory tonight. Irvington at six. Hillhouse, Connecticut, still roll along undefeated. Bergen Catholic at eight. St. Anthony's, the Friars right there at number nine. They're looking to move up. And New Michelle at number 10 at 10 and 1 taking on Monroe Woodbury big highlights this Tuesday night at 10 p.m. on the high school weekly right here on MSG plus but of course this Thursday it's a game like none other the holiday tradition continues not only on MSG but MSG plus it's Xavier and Fordham prep these are images from 1968 and really it hasn't changed a bit they've been playing this football game for over a hundred years the turkey bowl on MSG look at these two teams and then this year it's Xavier taking on Fordham prep same as Kelly and company are coming to take out Fordham prep who's gonna win the 50 pound turkey it's on the line this Thursday what movie did you say? I don't know. Oh, uh, Changeling, I think. What's it called? Angel Angelina Jolie. Uh, it was very depressing. I hate movies about kidnapped kids. Oh, listen, we don't missing need kids. Right. I, Does I Lisa said, like? And I begged her on the way in the theater to go see the new James Bond movie because it was a two-horse race for the time. Right. You know, it was like this or that, and I was like, "Come on, let's just go see that." That movie's about missing kids. I can't stand movies like that. And uh, she's like, "No, no, I want to see this." And it's like, you know. Ten minutes into the movie, the kid is disappear. Everybody's crying, and it's like you know, I'm like, this is what you want to come see. So she pretty anyway. much runs the family. Oh yeah. <laughs> Jim, let me just say, I know the feeling. Uh, of course, of course, Lou. You know, I mean, I wanted to go see James Bond because you know, every Sunday morning here on MSG Plus, I basically work. <laughs> With James Bond, <laughs> 007 Brock. No, baby. Happy Thanksgiving, buddy. <laughs> All right, man. The score here, 21-16. St. Anthony's by five. We are moments away from the start of the second half. And Iona Prep is 24 minutes of football away from the first undefeated football season in school history since 1967. 41 years ago, they were called the Little Irish, and they bounced back from a 1-7 season in 1966 to have a perfect regular season capped off with a win over New Rochelle in the Turkey Bowl. They were, of course, Catholic League champions. No playoffs back in 1967. And an interesting thing, this year in 2008, a bond has developed between the 67 team and the current Iona Prep team. Several members of that football team are here in attendance tonight, such as Kevin Coop, Ed Plank, Bill Panessa, just to name a few. And a great moment happened during the regular season. After the Gales finished off a perfect regular season with a victory over St. Francis, Bob Sessa, the captain of the 1967 team, spoke to the current Gales and congratulated them on a great regular season, congratulated them on you know showing so much respect for Iona Prep and doing such a good job carrying the school's tradition. And then he said to them, let me tell you something, fellas, the greatest thing about being on an undefeated team back in 1967 wasn't the wins, 
wasn't the practices, it was the lifelong friendships that we developed being on a team, coming together, and accomplishing that unbelievable season. And he said, I hope the same thing happens for you guys. Whatever happens in the playoffs, I hope you have the friends 41 years after this season that I have 41 years after we all played together for Iona Prep. So the 67 team is here in spirit and rooting for the 2008 squad to finish the job, Jimmy and Lou. Mm. Great story, Eamon. That's a long time between titles, huh? 1967. Well, they've never, they're only appearing in their second AAA championship. So two-time Catholic High School football league champs. That is a nice story, the synergy between the team 41 years ago. Uh, you know, these guys were still, you know, uh, 25 years from being born. Right. You know, back in that, in that game. And that was a good story. And you got to we got to make a statement now as St. Anthony's with all the momentum, the way that second quarter ended, they get the first touch here to start the third. First down play, handoff goes up the middle, Chris Carberry. Short pickup on the play. Well, we spoke to Rich Reichert this week and asked him about his keys for the game, and we chronicled those keys early on. Be physical against the run. Mack, 11 carries, 144 yards, and three touchdowns. Most of that in the first 14 minutes of the game. Stop their big plays. Mack has got a 50-yard touchdown run. Use their kicking game. Ferrar, one for one for 39 yards. So their grades started out bad, Lou, but they got better as the second quarter went along. So it still remains to be seen how ultimately Richie Reichert's keys will grade out for this game. Chris Carberry banged up throughout the game, limped off the field once again. The handoff goes off tackle. It's O'Malley, Kevin O'Malley carrying the football again. Iona Prep does a good job to stop the run on that play. It's going to bring Morris Hilton has been there all day. Just great run support right here. Oh, yeah. Look at big number 72, Greg Gatson. 6'4", 235, Bronx born. Got a lot of potential, does the junior. At times this year, he's been unbelievable for the Gale. Third down and eight. Running the option. Here's Schroeder. He's got some room. Gets outside and picks up a St. Anthony first down across the midfield strike. Well, that's the difference when you got your school like St. Anthony's and you get your number one quarterback go down. Rich Riker knows he's going to put an athlete at the helmet quarterback, and you saw Schroeder right there. That was excellent acceleration to turn that quarter with a defender right up on his rear. Watch this right here. Now, right here, he's thinking, oh, someone might catch from behind, but Schroeder hits the high gear right there and gets the necessary yardage, gets the ball up over midfield and in Tyona Prep territory. First and 10 oh, for the Flyers. At the Iona Prep 48. And off goes off tackle. Two on that last play, second down and eight. Well, this has been the best defense St. Anthony's has for the Iona Prep offense, though. When I say that, I mean it's their offense because they're keeping that Iona Prep offense off the field. Go back, go back. Again, they try that tackle hole. And again, O'Malley is met at the line of scrimmage and driven back. Wrigley Gatson in on the play. Yeah, Gatson, you know, Gatson was so raw. You know, they met, but they just had to bring it out of him. And you see great shift sliding down the line of scrimmage and recognition of the ball carrier by Gatson. And coach said of him, you know, it paid off. He's coming. And look at him now having big moments in a huge football game. That was what Vic Carollo said, Mr. Gatson. Third down and five. Here's the pitch outside the front. And he is tackled and brought down Michael Hagan over there to make the play for the Gales. Well, basically now St. Anthony's Lou has the defense right where they want him in fourth down. Four for four so far on fourth down. And, of course, a huge one by that young man right there, Nick Flynn, the touchdown. So, a bit of a decision time, but on fourth and short, you would expect them to go for it. And this is where St. Anthony's has been so efficient through the years in this triple option uh, offense. They always have that quarterback who runs it to such perfection. Second start has been solid but another big moment here in this football game on our opening drive of the third quarter fourth down and four 
Schroeder keeps it himself, and he is not going to get there. And it's the sophomore Mike Longo once again with a big defensive play. Well, everybody's got an assignment, and number 54's assignment was the quarterback. And watch Longo coming down the line of scrimmage. He knows he's got the QB man. He seals off the pitch, Louie, and then he delivers the blow. <laughs> Look at the sophomore. I mean, that is one great football shot. You might be overwhelmed. You know, he might, you know, not be able to hang in a tempo like this. Tyree Woodson Samuels gets outside, then puts his head down, takes it across midfield, and he picks up an Iona Prep first down. But the coaching staff at Iona Prep, sort of Michael Longo, he will not back down this week. So quickly, you see how they change gears? Coach Carollo comes up with their first stop on fourth down of the night. And then very next play, Tyree Woodson Samuels turns it upfield. So number 54 gives number seven an opportunity to do his thing. And uh, lightning quick footwork of Tyree Woodson Samuels has Iona Prep now in St. Anthony's territory. It is first down in 10. And Matt gets outside at the 40. Turns on the Jets down the sideline. Stays in at the 10. The I think it's an open and shut case. It's number four right there. He is an absolute rocket going down the sidelines right here. And he navigates his way, keeps his feet in bounds. Watch it once again, off the little belly, bounces it to the outside. He's always going to get the edge. And look at this right here. Accelerates past the defense, finds his way in bounds. And the rest is history once again for the Mac attack, Jeffrey Mack. Extra point attempt is tipped and no good. So the kick is no good, and Iona Prep has a 27. Let me call me Jeffrey, he told me this week. So Jeffrey Mack, look at the touchdowns, folks. That's basically in two quarters and two minutes of football for Mack. 11-point lead, just two plays as they strike. 60 yards, of course, the big 48-yard run by Jeffrey Mack. Well, I know one thing. When I mean, you got a guy run for almost 200 yards and a little over two quarters of football, number two on your coach's keys for Vic Carollo, you're going to get high marks on that. Because that was one of his keys was, well, we have to run the football. Uh, Jeffrey Mack walked into coach's office on a Tuesday afternoon this week when I met him, had a big smile on his face. He was looking forward to playing in this football game on behalf of the Gale Nation trying to complete a perfect season and does he look like a guy who's just a junior man he is getting it on in this championship that kickoff gets away from Flynn he picks it up at the 15 he's hit breaks one tackle but can't get away from the rest and St. Anthony will start at about the 17 yard line well, Vic Carollo, in talking about how to beat St. Anthony's, he said, first and foremost, we got to stop their run. So St. Anthony's, they've gotten the better of him so far, 154 yards rushing. But then we got to run it on them. So, hey, look at the difference. I own a prep, 239 yards rushing in a little over two quarters and four rushing TDs and win the turnover battle. Well, so far even, each team has one turnover. That remains to be seen. Well, uh, most importantly, they have that 11-point lead on the scoreboard once again, a two-score lead after St. Anthony's cut it to one. Nice job by the offensive line, the surge, and Kevin O'Malley takes it through, picks up good yardage. He gets up with a little bit of a limp. He's jogs off the field. Well, you check it out once again, straight up the gut. Malley keeps the lays going. Looks like somebody just rolled up on the rear. He'll be able to shake that off. Kevin O'Malley. He's finishing his high school football career in grand fashion, making impact plays on the field. You see a little stretch out that left leg. Second down play. And the handoff goes right up the gut. Well, Lou. We don't know if it's going to play out like that, but we, we, we sat here at the half and we said very important for St. Anthony's 
They're going to get the ball coming out of the locker room. They just scored to give themselves a lot of momentum in the game. And then their quarterback, Schroeder, gets a big run there on that first possession. Gets over midfield. They got the first down. You could feel it coming. And the Iona Prep defense steps up there. And a couple plays later, they stop him on fourth down. And then they're in the end zone. All of a sudden, bang. The momentum is now with the Gales of Iona Prep. Colby Fiedler carries the football. It's up to about the 32-yard line. Colby Fiedler, number 34, the ball carrier. Decent on the tackle for the Gales. And an injured Fryer down at the 31-yard line. And Vic Carollo went on that magical run in 2004 and 2005, getting into the championship in 05, losing to St. Anthony's. Fryer's knocked him out the last couple years in the semifinals. And, of course, Rich Reichard winning the last seven titles. I mean, 10 overall. I mean, Rich Reichard, listen, he's been in this game long enough. He's been there for the ups and the downs. There were times when St. Anthony's was snake bitten in the championship game. And you see that he had defeated them last three years, two in the semis, one in the final. And then, of course, I own a prep with that monumental victory on October 25th. Game tied at 21 all. They scored the last 20 points for their first victory in 11 years. But, of course, Coach Carollo. You know, it was that victory against St. Anthony's too, Lou, where they really knew they had something special going uh, here at Iona Prep. And they decided, you know, in August, we're going to do it fast. And they knew early in the season they might do it fast and wrong, but they said we, we, if we can get to a point where we get into a championship game, by that time we'll be doing it fast and right. Boy, they had it fast and right early on in the season as they have just run the table with a perfect season and you get skilled kids and they put that tempo in there it has really paid dividends not a good sign there Corey Martin looks like Lou uh, being carried off by a couple of his teammates very athletic kid baseball player Corey Martin you see the elements Everybody battling the elements today, Lou. Mm -hmm. Trying to stay warm. Temperature got to probably be in the upper 20s, I would think, now. And the wind chill in the teens. It is a cold November late afternoon evening here on Long Island. Here is Schroeder looking to throw. He's going long and incomplete. Mutual contact there. Good job by the officials not to throw the flag. DeSalvo on the coverage and intended for Fiorvante. <laughs> so it'll bring up a third down for the Friars. Third and seven, you see the yardage. Very close, actually. Iona Prep with 283. So the Anthony's most of their yardage on the ground, and they go outside again. And that is good yardage for Flynn. I think Flynn is pretty much solidifying his spot as the feature back for the 09 Friars as the junior. He gets it going in a hurry, does he not? And you see once again off the option, and he just turns it up. Great competitive quickness by Flynn. I like the way Flynn runs. He seems to run faster when he smells the defense coming up behind him. <laughs> he had seven carries, 78 yards in the game. It's first and 10 for the Friars. Schroeder looking to throw. Now he fires outside, incomplete. Intended for mature. The imagination of the Catholic High School Football League trying to slay the Giants. Schroeder running option, flips outside to Flynn and Nowhere to go. First man there was Darlos James. And Darlos James, you know, no entitlement for him. Just an all-out team player. Third down play. Schroeder steps up, fires outside, catch made. As Fiorbante tried to dive ahead towards that first down stick, but he is short by a couple of yards. Feel 
And Fields, the big play guy. We're already committed to Harvard for lacrosse, so you know he's an exceptional student. And they just, they like his speed and his ability to make for St. Anthony's. Four or five so far. And it's a fourth down and about three. Give up the middle, that's enough for a first down. Kevin O'Malley picks up first down yardage inside the 35. You see, they sort of set you up, Lou. You know, you're thinking they're going to run option. If you're a linebacker or a defensive end, you know, you're thinking, all right, quarterback, watch your assignments, watch your lanes. Let's look for the pitch man, and boom, they hit you with belly straight up the middle. And a good-looking play right there as O'Malley hobbles off the field, bangs his way for the first down. Job well done, number three. First and ten for the Friars. And off goes to Carberry. Chris Carberry carries. These guys are banged up, getting just about every play, but they get right back up and go at it again. I mean, it's been, you know, these teams are virtually polar opposites, Lou. Iona Prep has just hit the cat, the Mr. Mack home runs time and time again. Jeffrey Mack hitting the home runs. And then uh, St. Anthony's gets the ball, and they just grind and grind and grind their way down the field. Yeah. Schroeder that time had a hard time with the snap and then throws an it's, interception. Yes, it is. Mike O'Hagan. That play was doomed from the start. Schroeder seemed to have some trouble with the snap and then threw an ill-advised pass, picked off. Well, the book on O'Hagan. Senior inside linebacker, All-American lacrosse player, and it's the pressure right there put on the quarterback. And when a quarterback throws the ball before he wants to, it opens things up. And number 32, Michael O'Hagan. O'Hagan all over the field. O'Hagan's had a bad shoulder for a while, Lou, and he's just toughed it out. Well, here's Mack, who struggles to get back to the line of scrimmage that time. Yeah, O'Hagan, this is a guy who led the team in tackles a year ago. All right, easy now, boys. we got a lot of football left. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Don't celebrate early, but remember, 15, 16, 17-year-old kids, as a member of the coaching staff, comes right over and yells out. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, is that cameraman Mark Angeletti? <laughs> There's the throw over the middle, incomplete, intended for Chris Alfano. Well, that's what you like. You know, you take a shot, you get a turnover, and you go right up over the top looking for a dagger. You know, Tyree Woodson Samuels took a shot right there, but he's got some toughness as he bounced right back up there. What a year he's had me throwing the ball. Completed 73% of his passes. 73% low. I mean, I'm bad in math, and I know that's good. Well, you listen, you're going to play the position of quarterback against St. Anthony's, and you know you're going to take some shots right there. As Fume Ryan comes in. touch this guy gets his fifth touchdown of the game Man. Jeffrey Mack is putting on the performance of a lifetime in the Catholic Championship and here's a fake Iona prep trying to get two with a throw towards the end zone is incomplete and a penalty flag is thrown that could be interference called against St. Anthony's. And it is pass interference against the Friars. So Iona Prep will get another shot. This time they may kick, let's see. 
Well, Lou, they're up 17 points. So it's three scores no matter what. It looks like they are indeed sending in the kicking team this time. Pass to the first, number 26 on the defense. Half the distance, free time. Nope. Yeah. They're gonna go, it's the offense who comes come in. <laughs> Listen, why would you do anything else but give it to number four? A yard and a half away now, half the distance to the goal. And Tyree Woodson Samuels is in the shotgun. And he gets yeah. it to Mack, and he burrows his way in for the two-point conversion. Of course he does. Because it's his night, Lou. It is his night, Jeffrey Mack. When speaking about this game and his teammates, Jeffrey Mack said the hurt, the history pushes us. We want to do what no team, and I own a prep, has ever done, become AAA champs. Hot it up, you guys are making fun of me. I'll tell you this right now, Friday night in Ramsey, New Jersey, Cavallo left after the third quarter. I'm cold, he and Gary Adler made their way down the parking lot. They were so cold. Jeffrey Mack, red hot. Tuesday night, you're gonna see one of the best games played in quite some time in New York City. Ford Hamilton, Susan Wagner, the Tigers. They stay perfect. They're going to take on Port Richmond in the PSAL final next week. They beat Susan Wagner 29-26. And BC, they're going to be playing their old friends from Don Bosco December 6th in our Game of the Week presented by New Balance. That'll be at Giant Stadium. Should be a lot of fun. Why don't you guys stay warm up there in your little <laughs> press box? Suck it up! <laughs> All right, Mike. So let me get this straight. Bosco's up by 30. The third quarter ends, and I got to stick around. <laughs> oh my God! I tell you. Matter of fact, I went to the Dunkin' Donuts in Ramsey. It was Peter DeSalvo with the punt. It's touched inside the 15. I left the game. Don Bosco prep. Just smoking St. Peter's prep again. Uh, you feel for Richie Hanson, the Marauders. 24 nothing after the first quarter. All Don Bosco prep. So. Third quarter ends, I leave, I go to the Dunkin' Donuts and Ramsey to try and thaw out a little bit. And you know, you meet some St. Peter's Prep fans there. I mean, listen, I know Quick's gonna say, the St. Peter's Prep fans were in the Dunkin' Donuts during the fourth quarter? Well, yeah, they were, because they knew it was over. And just the ultimate compliments they had to Don Bosco Prep and how good and how tough they are. And they are, listen, they are our number one team for a reason. And their next loss, in the tri-state, the state of New Jersey is nowhere in sight, Lou. They are off the charts. Here's a throw down field, nearly intercepted. Got the coverage. They'll bring up a second down. Now Bosco is just having another spectacular season. He's just steamrolling everybody. And you know, I, I you know, I get there last night, and I'm thinking hey, maybe St. Peter's comes out, maybe hits an, an early play. You know what I mean? Nice year, Oliver, going to Notre Dame, and. 24-0, Lou, after the first quarter. I mean, they put some hits on uh, St. Peter's early, and they just they took the will out of them. And that's why they are our number one team. And that's why Bergen Catholic, uh, they are going to need to think outside the box for that parochial final. They are going to need to think outside the box. They'll have to pull off the upset of the century. They're going to have to do something above and beyond. Uh, like they're going to have to get 11 supermen out there. They're going to have to, you know, get Brian Cushing on the flight from the, the west to the east, man. They're going to have to do something because that is a challenge like none other uh, to line up with Don Bosco Prep this year. And now Rich Record now sees this game go to the fourth quarter. And listen, you're not down so many points. Uh, down 17, never lost a championship, more than one regular season, regular season loss, 10 titles, 103 and 7. Yeah, they started out the season losing to St. Joe's Philly. And this, you know, seemingly this magical run is going to come to an end. And it's not that they're down by so many points. So they're down 19 points. It's just the fact that they can't stop Iona Prep today. They just can't stop Jeffrey Mack and the Mack attack. And off goes. Off tackle. Kevin O'Malley on the carry. And Mike Dunkley in on the play for Iona Prep, but that should be enough for a first down for the Flyers, and they do move the chains. <laughs> it's just been the image, a night-long image seeing O'Malley. You know he's hurting. Uh, if this wasn't a championship, he'd probably be done for the day. 
but he's, he's going on guts now, as the Friars have been in this uh, latter stages of the season. And O'Malley, as I mentioned, is a senior playing his last game as a Friar. And, you know, this they've met a great force tonight at Illinois Prep. There's no question about that. An electrifying team. Throw downfield into coverage as it caught. No, it's intercepted. Picked off by Joe Hutu. Oh, what a play. Man, that is class A thievery right there. What a pick by number six. Listen, man, that's a student athlete of the game. The sports this guy. You gotta love it. And Joseph Ricci's a guy that studies the game, but sometimes you just got to make an athletic play. And look at his throws up there. Looks like Wine's got it. Oh, you see the ball must have hopped up and rolled off there. I don't know. Referee yeah. is right on top of it. And he'll give it to Ricci. I thought Timothy Wine had made that catch, and all of a sudden Ricci comes up with the ball. Ricci so intense every day on the field and in the classroom. We mentioned as all his accolades in school, also a baseball player. Meticulous kid, too. Not only meticulous with his academics, but also with football. Studies the game. Look at Andretti. That's my cameraman, Mark Andretti, brave in the cold to give you that nice... Oh, did I call him Andretti like the race car driver? <laughs> Angela, I, I only known the guy for like 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Mark. We're looking at doing a nice job right there, giving you the pictures here in the game of the week. Our whole crew braving the elements. We appreciate that. Of course, Lou demanded to be in a nice heated press box, so yeah, right. I followed him right up. A good play right there by Joe Ritchie. You know, usually, I, I, we are I, gotta, I gotta mention to you, you, usually we have the windows wide open. I know. Oh, what happened to that? You know, I'm having a tough I, 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 weekend. I, I, I left get it. Don Bosco I mean, three, you know, I was freezing. You know, we, we both walked in today, we were like, oh, those windows are coming open. Yes. But I blame it on the stack guy, Keith, over there, okay? Thank you, Keith. Thumbs up from Keith. But, uh, no, listen, beautiful facility here, Mitchell Field yeah. on Long Island, right on the outside of the Nassau Coliseum, Hofstra over to our right. Uh, but it's been the place that Iona Prep will call the home of what looks to be their first ever AAA championship. Still got a, a, a player down on the field. You see everybody taking one knee. It's like a member of the front. And then driven out of bounds at the 43. New level this weekend. As we all know, they have a few connection with the world champion football giants. And look what the Giants sent over this week. It's called the Shock Doctor. As we take a look, <laughs> Let's see what it does in here. It keeps the balls warm and toasty. No cold balls for the Gales today. You get them down here, you get a nice football for Tyrone, Tyre Woodson Samuels to throw around. So the Giants send it all over, and if they get this far next year, the order's already been placed to bring in those nice warm benches so that maybe we can all get a seat. But Jimmy and Lou, I'm going to hang out down here by the shock doctor for a few minutes. <laughs> uh, that's a good move, Eamon, no doubt about it. That thing is no joke either, I mean, because on a cold, windy day like this, yeah, that thing is 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 connected to a, ge a couple generators. Now, that's just not like some insulated bag, like you have your pizzas delivered in. That thing, if you look behind the bench where that thing is, there's two generators actually powering that thing up. So those footballs, you know, they're staying nice, warm, and toasty there. So when Jeffrey Mack, and there's the generators. Now pan left there, Mark Angeletti. And look, they're connected right to the shot down there, right there. <laughs> and there you go, keeping the balls nice and warm. Now, of course, I think you're going to say, oh, man, let's just see our camera guys up there braving it. Yeah, nothing like being like 900 feet in the air on a cold night, right? Great job by these guys. I, I got to hand it to them. I don't know how they did it. I bailed out last night at Don Bosco. Frank and Eric all bundled up, 60 layers of clothing. Why not? Well, off the snap, Tyree Woodson Samuels tried to forge ahead, but a short pickup on the play. We all right, 10 minutes and 50 seconds, counting down here in the fourth quarter. They're going to prep, try to hang on and win the Catholic League Championship, their first title since 1967, if they do so. On a second down play, Woodson Samuels has the corner at the 40, and then driven out of bounds at the 43. 
Yeah, Tyree Woodson, Samuels, you know, Eamon mentioned the connections that Aaron Prep has with the New York Giants, Sean Mara, uh, his grandfather, the late, great, legendary figure, Wellington Mara, and Sean Mara led uh, this team into the championship two, three years ago in 2005. And Tyree Woodson, Samuels said, you know what, as an eighth grader, I used to hear about Sean Mara and all that he was doing at Iona Prep, and it sort of piqued my interest uh, in the Gales. And look where they are. Just three years later, he's now running this team. Here's Mack again, running out of bounds across the 45. Jeffrey for Jeffrey Mack. And you talk about a team that's going to be out and out, the favorites. Finally ridden down, loss of about three or four of the play. But the meters moving down to 940 re remaining here in this fourth quarter. Yeah, Coach Vic Carollo said of Tyre Woodson Samuels that he's been the difference this year because he brings a swagger to us. He goes, you know, even back to October 25th. When we're going into the St. Anthony's game, well, listen, we know they're the benchmark. The team has won seven in a row, and people expected that's where our perfect season would come to an end. He says, Tyree Woodson Samuels, he had a confidence about him and a swagger going into that game that they want. he wanted to compete, and it played off. And he gets it to Chris Alfano, who breaks it to the secondary and takes it inside. Man, a lot of big plays this year. Chris Alfano, all county and track. Kid out of New Rochelle, 150 pounder, but really, really lets it rip on the field of play. And Chris Alfano has made a habit of the yak yards this year, the yards after the catch. He catches it and he goes. And Alfano part. Our sacks alive ball. The whistle comes in though. You know the thing about Iona Prep right now. You know the we know that they won the cross championship, the Metro championship. And, if, you know, Chris County track champions in the 4x200, 4x400, you know, Darlow James, and Tyree Woodson, and Louis Munoz also part of that that relay team. And they won the counties and went really far in the New York States. Mack is brought down from behind. John Burke on the tackle John for the Flyers. The tackle of Jeffrey Mack, number four. So third down upcoming here for the Gales. Eight and a half left here in this fourth quarter. No, it's been a long time, Lou. You got to go back to 2000 the last time. St. Anthony's did not win this title. Here's Mack. He's got wide open spaces and takes his sixth of the game. The legend grows of Jeffrey Mack in the 2008 title game. They cannot stop number four in any way, shape, or form. It's been his night. Off the little on the inside, great blocking at the point of attack. Yeah, we mentioned number 75, Pacioni. He got a great block. And listen, Jeffrey Mack gets a lot of credit as he should. But his offensive line has done a spectacular job tonight and all year. You gotta just make some contact for that guy. You see Teddy Matoma, the captain, number 77, getting a handshake. He's had a huge year. Well, he's got six touchdowns, the first player to do so on the high school game of the week, and 349 yards rushing. What do you get for that? <laughs> New balance for life, a car, a black a trophy. I have a sneaky suspicion he's going to be with Eamon before the game. I love that shot, though, we just saw of him thanking his offensive line. Taking good advice. And you can see, he gets into space. It's a whole lot of trouble. Are you having sliders? I got Really. What a performance. And the Gales put up 41 points now for the second time this season.
against St. Anthony. And in similar fashion, I mean, Rich Riker was well aware of what this team, team could do. Uh, they, the big plays killed them the first time. The big plays have killed them the second time. And, you know, Rich Reichert said going into that October 25th game, we underestimated their speed. I mean, they didn't underestimate it going into this game, but it's just been, they've been that good with their speed tonight, I own a prep. And it's been Jeffrey Mack. Nick Flynn's had a big game. He's got a good kickoff return going here. Across the 40, to the 30-yard line. He's got a 20, the 10. That'll be a touchdown for St. Anthony's. It's a reflection of what this team has been about tonight. They will not quit, as their head coach told Damon at the half. They will just keep coming. And it will be Nick Flynn's turn next year to lead the Friars, as you see. He says, come on, we still got eight minutes to go. Gets a couple blocks. Look at the big cutback against the grain. Look at him. This is just speed, speed, speed. By Nick Flynn, his second touchdown of the night. And he has been really impressive. So St. Anthony's down 41-22, and they will line up for the two-point conversion, but now a timeout taken by PowerToLearn.com, and make sure you catch The Challenge every Saturday and Sunday at 6.30 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. only on News 12. St. Anthony's lines up for two. Here's the pitch outside, Mercurio. Trying to turn the corner, but Iona Prep has it diagnosed. And the two-point conversion, not success. Iona Prep leads 41-28. They have a third down play. Here's Jeffrey Mack outside. There he goes. He's at the 10. The 5 makes a move. Touchdown, Iona Prep. Seven touchdowns on the night. Well, listen, it's a 13-point game, so they're not running it up. But in number four, it's his night, so you just keep going his way. And seven touchdowns for Jeffrey Mack. You know, Mike Quick is here. I pretty much think Mack has sealed up the New Balance High School Weekly Offensive Player of the Week. I don't know, it's going to be a tough one. There were a couple of good performances around the tri That's 398 yards rushing and seven touchdowns. I think that's a strong case, wouldn't you think? He has all seven touchdowns. All seven touchdowns. Jeffrey Mack. And running like his dad, Jeffrey Senior, used to run back in the day over at Dewey Clinton High School. What a performance. And the Gales lead 48-28 with 329 left. Last year, in the third game of the season, Jeffrey Mack was inserted into the game. And it was his first touch on varsity. He went 60 yards on a screen for a touchdown. And as Vic Carollo said, from that moment on, the Jeff Mack show had begun. And they have not gone away from him since. It's just, he is the accelerator. It is, your efforts are in vain to cut him off, to get an angle on him. And then one last move. Joy. Going back to Iona Prep tomorrow. And walking the hallways. That is going to be a special. Because last year, early on in the year, Jeffrey Mack was kind of disgruntled. They really couldn't find a position for him. He really wasn't having a good year. And then Darlos James went down with an injury, and they had no one left at running back. So they threw Jeffrey Mack in at running back. And then, as you mentioned, that screen pass was his first play ever as a running back for the Gales. Made the catch, took it 65 yards. So not only did they get a running back in Jeffrey Mack, Darlos James, a great athlete, moves over to wide receiver. So, you know, you always hear as coaches say, injuries, one guy injury is another guy's opportunity what an opportunity that has become for this Gales offense yeah Mac I mean that's 
As you know, that's why you got to speak highly of Darlos James. He will not take any days off tomorrow at Iona <laughs> Prep. There will be basketball practice at 3 o'clock for the coach. And he will resume his duties as the basketball coach and a great job by him. That is a very, very special title. Uh, the heavyweight championship, so to speak, in the Catholic High School Football League. 2008 will be the year of the Gales, undefeated as they will join the 1967 team. St. Anthony's keeping it on the ground here as the clock winds down, two and a half remaining here in the fourth. And of course, Rich Reichert, he will give credit where credit is due as the true professional he is. And they will circle the wagons a bit. They'll come back next year healthy, ready to rock, and do not think uh, that Iona Prep is the out-and-out favorite. They'll be the favorite, but you know the Friars will loom large in the picture for 2009, as they always do. Don't be shocked, Lou, if you and I are standing side-by-side -side here next year for the same matchup. Well, I certainly wouldn't be surprised at all. You know, St. Anthony's has some weapons coming back as well. You know, we talked about Flynn, Nick Flynn coming back and running back, and Brendan Schroeder will be coming back, Romeo Jr. Timothy Wine, the wide receiver, he's just a junior. You never feel bad for St. Anthony's good players and talent. That's why you didn't feel bad for them. You felt bad for the kids personally. Uh, you know, Atik Lucas and company um, when they went down. But you never feel bad for them because we know St. Anthony's, uh, like Tom Bosco, like St. Joe's, like St. Peter's, like Burton Catholic, they get players. Okay? And there's, no, there's never any question uh, about that. So you felt bad for Tommy Schreiber when he got hurt? And the team Lucas, but these programs, these Catholic programs, are built on depth and having a lot of athletes. Well, they will, they will not apologize uh, for winning seven straight titles, as they should not. They earned every one of them. Well, as Iona Prep lined up and then on the handoff, the ball came loose. And officials Fume playing his final game. Move on to the University of Massachusetts to play lacrosse. Excellent athlete. Still got his senior season on the lacrosse field left. And talking of, speaking of lacrosse, we send it down to Eamon McEnany. Hey, there you go. Well, you know, Jimmy, I thought it was interesting you talking about all those championships that St. Anthony's won. And it was one of those semifinal victories two years ago on a way to another Friar title that really helped spark a long bus ride back from South Huntington to New Rochelle. How are we ever going to beat these guys? How are we ever going to beat these guys? We just can't line up and run it with them. And through that, that up-tempo, no-huddle attack was born that night on that bus ride back. They went to a coach's clinic run by Tony Franklin, completely changed their offense. Of course, it helps when you have Woodson, Samuels, and Mack. But a defeat at the hands of the Friars helped build this Gales championship team. And Mercurio looking for the end zone. He's in. That's a touchdown, St. Anthony's. They just don't want their careers to end. They will not die. The Friars put another score on the board. A lot of fight. A lot of fight. And Mercurio and the boys. And they just want to keep making plays until the final seconds of their high school football careers end. And Coach Riker, he's got a lot to be proud of with this group. Uh, you know, they lost their two signature players. They had a lot of tough guys, a lot of good athletes left. And they banged their way to these finals. And look at Nick Mercurio, just giving it everything he has for four quarters uh, of this football game. Why not? That's the only thing he knows how to do. So Nick Ferrara is in to kick the extra point, and he drills it through. A minute 34 left here in the fourth quarter. It's 48 to 35. Mercurio, 48-yard touchdown run to cap off that drive. Yeah, and just off the option. Look, has a slowdown for the pitch. And then just gallops his way, running through arm tackles. And excellent closing speed going across the field. Chewing up a lot of yardage along the way. Nick Mercurio. Mercurio. Kevin O'Malley, you know, reflecting on the final moments. They've been through a lot of wars together. 
these guys. A lot of days on the field. And I think it's safe to say, Lou, these guys will be buddies for life. I mean, these guys will, 10 years from now, pick up the phone, see what's going on. Maybe they'll even live in the same town together somewhere. But you don't forget guys like this uh, when you go through life as a teammate and part of a football program. <laughs> like these guys, yeah. absolutely right. Yep, great example. 1967, undefeated Iona Prep guy to pay tribute to this current team and wish them on, and here they are, 41 years later. And the Gales recover the onside kick. So they'll look to run it out here. And St. Anthony's has no more timeouts remaining with a minute 32 left them here in the fourth quarter. Tight unit, Coach Carollo's bunch. Very tight unit also on this side. Tyree Woodson Samuels, you know, he's had, he's had life hit him square in the face. Last two years, he's lost two grandparents and his Aunt Keisha. He said, I got through it because we're a tight family. Just a tight family, I love to be around my family. And he, he told me something interesting, Lou. Tyree Woodson Samuel said, every day before I leave for school, I yell at my mom, I love you, because it's important to me. And he goes, and this week I want to yell I love you as a Catholic champ. And he's going to get that. With just one minute left, the Gales will take another knee. Woodson Samuels watches the clock tip down. We're less than a minute left now, and the celebration begins on the Iona Prep sideline and with their students. They can feel it. Oh, listen, they should celebrate it. It's an emphatic victory. It's a victory based on hard work and talented players who came together. I mean, Tyree Woodson Samuels was on the JV last year. Uh, Gregory Mack, you know, Jeffrey Mack, I should say, uh, you know, got a touch last year. But nothing crazy. And coming into this year, these guys have exploded upon the scene and knocked off a seven-time champion. It's a moment that will stand for a lifetime for these Iona Gales. But let history show the run at seven for St. Anthony's has come to an end. The 2008 champs are right there in front of you, the Gales of Iona Prep. They win their first title and finish undefeated for the first time since 1967. Iona Prep wins the Catholic League title as they defeat St. Anthony's 48 to 35. And we'll be back to wrap things up in just a few moments here from Mitchell Field. Once again, the Gales are the 2008 Catholic League AAA champions. Welcome back to our high school football game of the week presented by New Balance. Iona Prep wins the Catholic League championship defeating St. Anthony's 48-35. And Eamon McEnany is standing by with our New Balance player of the game. Eamon? Big players play big in big games and that's exactly what Jeffrey Mack did in the AAA Catholic League championship game for Iona Prep. Seven touchdowns, 398 yards. Put that in perspective for us against this St. Anthony defense in a championship game that they've won seven years in a row. How were you guys able to run the ball on them like that? I mean, it was just the O-line. The O-line came out and they played great. You know, we practiced hard all weekend. You know, the O-line, they just opened up the holes. You know, I couldn't do it without them. A championship season and an undefeated season for most players is just that, a dream. What kind of dream has this been for you and your teammates to cap this championship year off tonight, the first undefeated school season in school history since 67? I mean, this, this is just great. You know, we had the pep rally yesterday. You know, we was, we was real hype about it. You know, we just came out and just made history. You know, we, we didn't know we was going to come this far, but, you know, we worked hard all season and we just came far, and we, and we did it. We won the chip. Jeffrey Mack, congratulations. Enjoy it. Get ready for basketball practice on Monday. All right. Jeffrey Mack, our New Balance MVP. All right, Damon, once again, our final scores. Iona Prep 48, St. Anthony's 35. Today's game was produced by Bob Lawani and directed by Sean Mangan. Our associate director was Mike Shea, and our graphics coordinator was Will Sanchez. The senior coordinating producer of high school football on MSG Plus is Jackie Lyons. Mike Quick.
Tonight gives you the scoop on the entire Tri-State High School scene on the New Balance High School Weekly presented by Max Preps. Catch it every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. only on MSG+. Plus. We've got more exciting high school football action coming your way next week. You'll be sure to give thanks for our football doubleheader first on Thanksgiving Day. We're live for one of the oldest rivalries in the city. It's Xavier versus Fordham Prep on Thanksgiving morning at 10.30. Then on Sunday, you'll see the Long Island Championship as Freeport battles Connect Quad on the high school football game of the week presented by New Balance. That's Sunday at 11 a.m. on MSG+. Plus. Well, thanks for tuning in to High School Football on MSG+. Plus. For Eamon